first times for anything can be difficult, anxiety provoking, confusing and embarrassing. Me personally, I found that especially to be true for getting tested for sexually transmitted infections as a teenager. I remember being alone, seated in my parents' green minivan on a hot summer day, uh, summer of 99, uh, parked outside my family physician's clinic. I was early uh, to the appointment. My palms were sweaty. My heartbeat was palpable. Uh, I was kind of leaned back in the driver's seat chair, almost as if I was an accomplice uh, or party to a crime. Having attended Catholic schools growing up, you know, we were taught that sex outside of wedlock was essentially uh, a crime you should feel guilty for. And I somehow did. Uh, I was also uh, very concerned uh, after having had unprotected sex for the first time four weeks earlier uh, that I might have been infected with a sexually transmitted infection. And you know, I didn't have any symptoms, but the uncertainty gnawed at me. Uh, it was heavy. And I knew the only way to get rid of it was to be tested. Uh, however, uh, on the flip side of that was the certain embarrassment uh, that I immediately felt just thinking about divulging, you know, this very secretive um, act, um, having had sex with a man I barely knew, my family physician. Um, we had never talked about it. Um, and again, the cultural upbringing uh, that I had gone through uh, within the uh, parochial school system, you know, made this something that we just didn't really talk about. And so faced with the uncertainty on one hand, the embarrassment of having to talk about it with an essential stranger on the other was certainly a hurdle I had to overcome uh, to get tested. Uh, and that was just one that was just one of many hurdles that I would encounter on my journey uh, to knowing my results. I would also face issues of uh, financing and cost, uh, inconvenience uh, and, uh, and potential judgment. Uh, that I needed to uh, overcome to get tested for uh, my first time for STIs. I had grown up in a family that was very supportive, both emotionally and financially. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have health insurance through my father, and my mother was the person who scheduled my sister and my visits to dentists, doctors, uh, even haircuts. Uh, I uh, did not want them to know that I was sexually active at the age of 16. And so I had to take on all that responsibility of scheduling, paying for, um, and coordinating uh, my first independent visit really to a physician. And that was also a barrier I would find quickly. Although I had worked, uh, I was working at the time as a young man flipping burgers at our local Hardee's, um, I still uh, did not have the financial means to pay for a, a visit without my parents' insurance. And so one day you know, while they were gone, uh, I looked in the place where I knew they kept all their uh, important documents, things like our passports, stamps, and found their insurance card. Uh, and then the next step was to, I remember, page through the yellow pages uh, to find my doctor's clinic office number. This was a time before cell phones when um, you needed to memorize your best friend's numbers uh, to get in touch to schedule basketball games or you know, just hangouts and sleepovers. Uh, and so I, I found the number called and um, a pleasant voice on the end, I remember answering, uh, but then it was just one convenience after another, really. And, you know, I could not be seen that day, not even that week. It would have to be three weeks down the line. Um, I needed to bring proof of our healthcare insurance. Plus there was a copay I learned I had to pay, which essentially was uh, you know, half a day's work at my uh, job, fast food position. You know, that money I had earmarked for baseball cards and basketball shoes. Um, but uh, I never wanted to have to pay for a doctor's visit. I did so begrudgingly. The, you know, three weeks ensued, three painstakingly weeks ensued from the time I made the appointment to when I had to go there, you know, sitting in the um, waiting area, you know, uh, kid crying to my left, three month old Better Homes, a magazine to my right, which I had leafed through, uh, appreciating the interior decor. Um, I was nervous thinking everyone knew why I was there. Um, the nurse called me back, took my vitals and then left me in a overly chilled room 
uh, you know, linoleum floor, very sanitary feeling, blue walls to probably instill a sense of calm, which did not really work. And uh, just elevator music overhead. There are pictures of uh, our anatomy uh, displayed on the walls, you know, humans with their skin peeled off essentially showing their different organs uh, plastic plant to my left the doctor knock 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 comes in at the time i was rehearsing kind of what i wanted to go through again my heart beat palpable um and you know he did not really um try to connect with me on an emotional level um no reassurance kind of just listened almost again as if uh, he was uh, a prosecutor cross-examining a witness um, asking very clinical questions about very intimate deeds and, and acts. Um, I don't remember much of the content of the conversation, just that I wasn't reassured, but relieved that it was over. Uh, I was then had to sign a waiver, I recall, um, at the time for uh, being tested for HIV, amongst other things. And um, a, a quick trip to the phlebotomist later, I was out the door and told I had to wait two weeks for my results. The problem was that we were leaving as a family for summer vacation in Northern Michigan, a trip I very much looked forward to going on, um, but the agony and uncertainty of what the results could be, um, catastrophizing, thinking about the worst case scenario, uh, made it hard for me to really enjoy the time, you know, with my elder grandmother, uh, with, our, with our uncles and, and cousins, um, I had called every day, essentially checking in. This was before electronic medical records. So there was no real convenient way to find the results. Um, the first time I had contacted them, I was told that they, they weren't available. The second time, the next day after 10 business days, uh, the nurse basically broke the rules and, and divulged that, you know, everything looked fine. Everything was fine, she said. And that was all I needed. And I just said, thank you. The skies opened up overhead. The water was warm, bathing suit on. I was finally happy, relieved, a ton of weight off my shoulders. Um, I, I may have even cried, I don't know. Um, it was so emotionally taxing, this whole journey. Um, to get to that point uh, was truly uh, a really profound sense of relief. You know, that was uh, in the summer of 99. So over 20 years ago. So some of you probably weren't even born yet. Um, yet, you know, what has changed in getting access to STI testing and treatment? Um, I think it's only gotten harder. And I see that from the standpoint of a physician now. I am now the doctor who is interviewing the patient, the nervous person wanting to be screened for the first time. Um, Co-pays have only gotten higher uh, inpatient in-network and out-of-network arrangements between insurers and providers that will become more opaque. More, more patients are going bankrupt for medical expenses than in the history of our nation. Uh, and yet we have all these technological advances that are most supposed to make this process more seamless and accessible. Why is this happening? Well, I don't think it's, you know, because the yellow books aren't around anymore. Uh, and so that's why I wanted to create Mona. I wanted to create it to make the process as seamless and sensitive as possible to circumnavigate or get around the barriers uh, that I faced and that people still face to an increasing degree uh, to getting just basic primary health care services. I created it, uh, Mona, for you, and I created it more especially for my 16-year-old self. I wish this service, I wish this platform was available to me then. Uh, it would have allowed me to enjoy the most important moments, the moments with the family uh, more deeply and in, and in the present uh, than I did. And I'll never have that time back, but I hope that by you using Mona, uh, you will be able to enjoy life, life more.